Uh, Patrick Van Rau here, orthopaedic surgeon from the Brisbane Hip Clinic. So this presentation is going to be on the topic of um, articular viscosupplementation as a management option for the treatment of symptomatic hip joint disorders, uh, particularly uh, grades of osteoarthritic wear. So the list of topics that we're going to go through is uh, listed here and um, hopefully by the end of this uh, discussion, you'll have a, a better understanding about what viscosupplementation is, um, why we use it, um, how we use it, and uh, what its role may be in the management of your hip condition. Viscosupplementation is an injectable, long-acting pharmaceutical therapy. Uh, where we use viscosupplementation is where a person has uh, symptoms from uh, osteoarthritis of the hip joint, uh, whether it be uh, either mild, moderate, or severe articular wear. And we're trying to achieve a medium term reduction in symptoms of the duration of um, around about between six and 18 months, thereabouts. So uh, viscosupplementation forms um, part of a, uh, a bigger picture in terms of the overall global management of osteoarthritis. Generally, when we talk about the non-surgical treatment of osteoarthritis, um, we talk about a number of different methods used in combination. So that would usually include some form of uh, exercise prescription, uh, physical therapies and some strength and conditioning some form of long-acting injectable therapy, uh, for instance, like viscosupplementation, and then some form of um, shorter-acting therapy for the management of the uh, ups and downs that you'll still get in your symptoms. Then they're generally oral pharmaceutical tablets like uh, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory preparations uh, or paracetamol products or analgesics. So um, viscosupplementation forms one part of that triad. So at the moment in Australia, there's three main types of viscosupplement that we can use. There's uh, Duralane, uh, Synvisc and Euflexa. Um, each of these has their um, merits um, and um, it, it would depend a little bit on uh, which joint that we're injecting. Um, sometimes we'll choose a slightly different preparation in the hip compared to the knee uh, for various reasons. And, um, also, it depends a little bit on uh, patient circumstances. Uh, in our clinic, we tend to use um, Euflexa uh, as the uh, most common, uh, but sometimes we would use one of the other alternatives. Uh, Visco supplement works uh, by stimulating the uh, lining um, cells of the hip joint uh, that we call the synovium to uh, manufacture their own uh, lubricant uh, in a form which is a little bit thicker, what we term a, a higher molecular weight. So um, the actual medication that we inject in isn't um, a lubricant as such, but what it does is it stimulates your own hip joint to make its own lubricant uh, a little bit better. And the duration of effect is um, in the order of about six to 18 months. So um, what would you expect clinically? Um, so most people on average would get about a 30% a reduction in pain after a visco supplement injection. Um, the, uh, the time course of onset is relatively slow. It, it takes um, around about six weeks to get 50% of the uh, uh, effect of a visco supplement and then 100% of the effect is usually gained by around about three months. Uh, in the hip, we generally only do a, a single injection. Um, in the knee, traditionally, uh, most of the preparations were as a, a three injection series, uh, although that has changed in the last few years. But in the hip, we generally do a, a, a one-off injection with a, a slightly lower dose visco supplement. When the uh, effect of a visco supplement wears off, um, then uh, it's perfectly safe to uh, re-inject it again. Um, generally speaking, these injections are done um, separated apart by uh, good durations of time. Um, so the concern with respect to um, repeated re-injections really isn't uh, a feature that we're too concerned about with visco supplementing because they are tending to be done on a fairly seldom basis anyway. Generally, I say to people, if you're not getting 
a worthwhile reduction in symptoms for a good six months or more, then really it's probably not the best treatment for you. The traditional indications for viscosupplementation is for the management of established uh, uh, moderate to significant osteoarthritis uh, of a joint. So initially in humans it was mainly used in the knee joint uh, but in the last 10 years it's extended out to uh, a number of other joints particularly the hip uh, and uh, we've found it really useful uh, in the management of people with um, symptomatic uh, cartilage disorders of the hip. So we would tend to use it in people with most commonly with um, osteoarthritis, um, although we have extended the indications for viscosupplementing to people with um, lower grades of wear, for instance, with um, significant uh, degenerative uh, labral tears in association with um, small areas of cartilage defects as well, uh, which probably doesn't satisfy the criteria of advanced osteoarthritis, but nonetheless, if we're trying to get longer term symptom relief um, and improve their, their, their pain um, by non-surgical measures, then we find this is sometimes quite a good alternative for them. Viscosupplementing is a uh, injectable therapy, so the medication needs to be delivered directly into the joint by an injection. So because the hip joints are a really deep uh, joint um, in comparison for instance to uh, the knee which is um, uh, quite close to the surface of the skin, um, we have to do hip joint injections under some form of guidance to enable uh, the injection to be done in an accurate manner to ensure that all of the medication goes into the joint. So. Um, so um, injections um, are generally done under uh, some form of imaging. So either uh, ultrasound or X-ray or CT scan. Um, so they can be performed uh, in your local radiology department um, and they'd be very um, happy to do that. Um, alternatively, um, at our clinic, we would do it under ultrasound guidance um, and we find that's um, really well tolerated and very accurate. Uh, one of the uh, things that people don't like about viscosupplementing is that um, it does involve a needle and needles into um, hip joints can be um, painful, um, particularly if the um, injection is done through uh, the anterior method, which is where the needle goes um, in through the front of your groin, um, which is a f um, somewhat more traditional way of injecting a hip joint, which many people might have experienced when having an MRI scan at a radiology department. And um, so that can be pretty painful. Um, when we do injections in our rooms here at clinic, um, uh, we would tend to do the injections through um, what's called a, a lateral uh, approach. So we make the injection more from the side of the buttock. Um, and um, uh, our observation and certainly the literature would uh, uh, say that these injections um, done in this manner are a lot more comfortable than when they're done through the anterior approach. So um, if you've had a, a bad experience with a, an MRI arthrogram, having an injection done in the front part of the hip joint, it's not necessarily going to be the same experience when you have a visco supplement done in our rooms. Visco supplementing uh, is a really uh, safe procedure. Uh, and it's a very safe medication. So the chances of having an infection related to the injection is in the order of about one in 10,000. So that's very rare. There are some people who can get an allergy to um, Synvisc, which is one of the types of uh, um, visco supplement that's offered in Australia, um, where um, people, particularly if they have an allergy to uh, eggs or poultry, uh, may, um, uh, experience uh, an irritation of their joint um, which can be pretty significant um, for the first couple of weeks or so. Um, we tend not to use Synvisc for that reason and Lou we would uh, tend to use Uflexa which doesn't really have that um, complication seen. Um, probably I would say that the biggest risk with visco supplementing is um, that the person is a non-responder so it's certainly just like any other um, medication or pharmaceutical treatment uh, that we would use 
uh, for the management of arthritis. There are some people who just don't respond. Um, and so uh, unfortunately we do see um, some people who don't respond at all. Um, although um, the majority of people do, work, do notice a, a worthwhile reduction in their symptoms. Um, and sometimes it can be very, very effective for extended durations of time. It's important to reinforce that um, generally we would see visco supplementing as a one part of an overall global plan for the management of osteoarthritis. Very rarely uh, would we rely just on visco supplementing alone for the management of your symptoms. So um, to reinforce it is part of a, a bigger picture and generally speaking uh, we would expect that the best results are obtained if the person also engages in some form of exercise prescription or physiotherapy, um, strength and conditioning, those sorts of activities, together with their injection to be able to pull their symptoms down, but also um, when they get their inevitable sort of ups and downs, which we naturally see with osteoarthritis, when you're having a bit of a flare um, on those particular days or weeks, you might use some form of adjunctive oral pharmaceutical like an anti-inflammatory to be able to just knock the peaks off the symptoms um, when required. There are a couple of other medium duration non-surgical alternatives to visco supplementing. Um, the first of those would be um, steroid injections into the hip joint. And steroid injections into the hip joint are indeed um, very effective. Um, we would tend to use steroid injections generally for uh, uh, symptomatic flares and osteoarthritis where a person's been managing reasonably well but for one reason or another they had a quite a significant flare up in symptoms and we just want to control it for a couple of months and a steroid injection is quite good for that. There are some downsides to steroid injection. Um, um, Probably from my perspective, the main um, concern with steroid injections is that their duration of effect is um, um, relatively short, maybe in the, in the order of months. And so because osteoarthritis is a permanent condition and it's slowly progressive, um, using injectable therapies like that for um, getting symptom relief for such modest amounts of time probably doesn't form a, a really good alternative in the longer in the longer uh, prospective management of that person's arthritis. So really, when we're doing injectable therapies, we're looking for something that will last a little bit longer. Nonetheless, steroid injections are quite useful to get on top of symptoms quite quickly. And indeed, in a, in a number of cases, um, when we're doing visco supplement injections, we might add some steroid to that visco supplement to be able to give uh, like an earlier response of symptoms because visco supplements generally have a bit of a lag time while the hip is starting to manufacture the lubricant a bit thicker. Um, and so to cover the person during that lag phase of about six to 12 weeks, um, the co-administration of a steroid is sometimes quite useful. The other alternative uh, to visco supplement uh, in articular management is what's called platelet-rich plasma. Um, so platelet-rich plasma is um, something that's um, relatively newer. Um, it's a, a procedure where uh, the uh, joint is injected with an anti-inflammatory which is prepared from your own blood. So the process is where we will take a, a blood draw. So it's a little bit more than what you'd need to take for an ordinary blood test but um, but less than what you'd have if you were giving a blood donation for instance and then that blood is then prepared in a centrifuge which separates all of the blood elements the plasma from the from the pack cell component from the platelet rich plasma and then what we do is we we withdraw the platelet rich plasma portion which is only a very small segment of the blood um, and then we inject it back into the site of interest so Traditionally, platelet-rich plasma has been used for um, tendon irritations around the body, and um, indeed there's some quite good literature um, looking at um, platelet-rich plasma for the management of tendonitis conditions. It's more recently started to be applied in, um, in joint arthropathies, for instance, in the hip and the knee. In the hip space, um, PRP um, hasn't been shown to be more effective than visco supplement. Um, and the um, 
Um, and the, the, the amount of data that's supporting it is relatively less because it's a relatively new therapy. So for me, at this current period of time, sometimes we would use PRP, um, but our mainstay of injectable medium-acting uh, to long-acting therapy is usually viscose supplementation. Another alternative to viscose supplementing in the medium to long-term management of um, osteoarthritis of the hip joint by non-surgical measures is radiofrequency neurotomy. So radiofrequency neurotomy uh, is a procedure, it's a little bit more involved than viscose supplementing, which um, viscose supplementing can be done as a walk-in, walk-out um, injectable therapy. It's a little bit like having a, a flu needle done, whereas radiofrequency neurotomy is a bit more of a big deal. Um, Generally, so radiofrequency neurotomy is non-surgical, so you don't need to have any cuts done, but it is the sort of procedure where you do need to come into hospital, in my opinion. Um, so uh, what it involves is um, having a uh, like a, uh, a very light general anaesthetic, um, and then around the hip joint, a, a fine needle is placed into um, into selected locations around the hip joint. Um, and the, the needle's got an electrical tip on it, and what it does is it, um, uh, it electrocutes, for want of a better word, the, um, uh, some of the sensation nerves coming out of the hip joint. And that tends to last longer than viscose supplementing. Um, uh, given the, um, the, the process of having a radiofrequency neurotomy, though, um, we don't tend to do it as often um, as visco supplementing, um, mainly because um, visco supplementing is so much easier uh, to conduct um, and it doesn't require an admission to hospital nor an anaesthetic. Nonetheless, there are some people who are not candidates for surgical intervention. They're really trying to push their um, non-surgical treatment as hard as what they can and radiofrequency neurotomy does form part of the role of the management of their, of their hip joint arthritis. Um, generally speaking, for radiofrequency neurotomy, if, if we're going to do that whilst you're asleep, we would also conduct visco supplementation at the same setting. So I hope that you've found this presentation of use uh, and that you understand visco supplementing a, a, a little bit more thoroughly now. Um, if you want to read any more around the topic of osteoarthritis or visco supplementing, there's a uh, uh, a lot of information on our website that's at brisbanehipclinic.com.au thanks for listening have a great day